So a YouTuber named Jen, who I've covered on this channel before, went out and asked, can you be racist to white people? Now, he does an amazing job in this video where they basically cover every aspect of the conversation. We're definitely going to be unpacking a handful of the conversations today in this video. But before we do, you guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is sponsored by, I actually have a new sponsor for the channel, Galaxy Lamps, a very cool product, and we will talk about them more in a bit. But for right now, let's jump in to Jen's video. His video is called, Can You Be Racist to White People? I'll put a link down to the full video in the description below if you guys want to check that out. Let's do it. Is it okay to be racist towards white people? I still struggle with this myself. Despite their ancestral impact on America, it's not right to put all of them in that box. I don't think it's okay to be racist towards anyone. White people are still people. It is possible to be racist towards white people as well, yes. I don't think you can be racist towards white people. What do you mean by that? Racism was invented by white people. You can't take it out of <laughs> historical context. Oh, hist <laughs> Racism was invented by white people. Right. That guy's just, I mean, dude's just making stuff up. Um, one thing I will say too about this first lady right here saying that despite what their ancestors have done, what other group do you hear that about? You know, do you hear, hear that about Japanese people? Do you hear that about any other group in the United States? Not often, if you do. It's really interesting how people oftentimes still keep that around. They hold that against people today that have absolutely nothing to do with any atrocities in the past. I don't think it's possible to be racist towards white people. There needs to be a system of oppression. Generally, white people are the ones controlling that system of oppression. Why do you think it's more accepted in society to make jokes about white people? Because they make jokes about the rest of us constantly. So do you feel like- Wait, <laughs> everyone makes jokes about everybody. What the lady, what the first lady was talking about though, she's talking about the um, more progressive twist on the definition of racism, which is prejudice plus power. That is the concoction. That's what you have to have in order to be racist. It's nonsense. Anybody can be racist, of course, but people grab onto it and they believe it. Like you have your guard up against white people? Sometimes I do. When white people are going through hardship, they're not as sensitive to it as you would be to a black community. In general, like white people, the privilege behind that. You make white jokes? I do sometimes. <laughs> a little. <laughs> it's okay to make white jokes. It should be okay to make any jokes. That's just like what a normal society thinks. That's not like on the edge of freaking out all the time. How would you define racism? Racism is judging or seeing yourself differently from somebody else because of the color of your skin. I would just say just preconceived notions about someone based on their skin color. It's like a systemic system where basically people are starting off at a way different point because of the color of their skin. Racism is made up social structure, exploits people based on their race. Globally, it seems like there's a lot of whiteness controlling racism. Is it okay to be prejudiced towards white people then? Sure. Is it okay to have prejudice towards black people? I mean, it's not okay, but I mean- Oh, oh enough of this guy. Okay, so the definition, at least the classic definition, it, it, I'm just going, I'm not even reading this anywhere. I'm just gonna go off the top of my head because we've talked about this in videos. Um, the belief that a particular race is superior or inferior to another and prejudice based on race. A lot of people, what they're pushing on college campuses is that prejudice pl plus power to allow for all different types of people to be racist against white people. And that's obviously absurd. Anybody can be racist if you discriminate and, uh, you know, if you discriminate based on race and that's it. So this guy's just repeating nonsense. These two ladies, they, they totally had it right there. Absolutely. It's a pretty basic concept. It's, it's pretty basic. It's evil. It's awful. We should be just completely eliminating it and not giving people excuses to be racist and then say, oh, well, I can't be racist. Ridiculous. Your definition of racism is purely systematic. No, I don't believe reverse racism can exist. If it's just a matter of discrimination, then yeah, absolutely. I had a racist brother and he was indigenous. Just because you're a minority doesn't mean you you, you don't hate. In a lot of cases of racism, you find that people, their races are the victim of something. Do you think though, at times, people use that excuse of like, you know, you can't be racist towards white people and they mask hate with good intention? I listen to my friends who are like people of color and they tell me their experiences and how they feel and I just try to understand the best that I can. You didn't answer the question. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to welcome a brand new sponsor to the channel, Galaxy Lamps. So I've known about Galaxy Lamps for a while because they have thousands of five-star reviews online, but after handling it in person, 
it definitely blows my mind and absolutely gets my stamp of approval. This right here is their Galaxy Projector 2. You can project high quality Galaxy imagery onto any surface with multiple color options and with their 360 degree dynamic projection, you can create an atmosphere that's perfect for relaxation, meditation, or simply adding a touch of magic to any room. And here's one of the best parts. Their smart app allows you to take full control with unlimited color options. You can customize themes, set timers and schedules, adjust brightness, and much more. As your wife or girlfriend said that you're not as romantic as you used to be, this is the answer. Are you in need of more relaxation? This is the answer. Does your niece ever visit and you wanna be the coolest uncle ever? This is the answer. Use the link galaxylamps.co slash James Klug. I'll put this link down below with the discount code James Klug for 15% off your order. That's discount code James Klug for 15% off your Galaxy Lamp order. I will put links down in the description below. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> that was a fantastic question from Jen. They mask hate with good intention. I listen. Mask hate with good intention. Super well said. Fantastic question. Unfortunately, she didn't really answer it right there. Um, and then also to the previous guy's point referring to a lot of people are stuck on that prejudice, pl prejudice plus power lie. The problem with that is, is it really falls apart. You know, you can have your city or your state or California majority Hispanic, and then you go into a city and it's majority minority that's in power. So it's like, okay, so you can be racist here, but not over here. Right. And then they say, oh, well, it has to be the entire system. The, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger basically until they can make themselves right. Like, oh, the country has majority white people. It's like, oh, oh, okay, okay. You can get away with racism as long as that's the case. Super interesting though. A lot of people are grabbing onto that and uh, using the term reverse racism. No, it's just racism. It's, it's pretty basic. It's just racism. What are your thoughts on, let's say, racial quotas or diversity hiring in the context of jobs or university? Programs like affirmative action, I think, are necessary, and I think they've shown to be effective at balancing income inequality between races. Job or opportunity should be given to the person who's got the best skill. I think a lot of the time the perception of diversity hires is that these people are unqualified, where in a lot of the times you're giving somebody the shot to show that they are qualified. Well, hold on, hold on. The reason why people would assume that you're giving the job to people that aren't qualified is because you're ticking a box, and if you're ticking a box, that means you're taking it from somebody else. It doesn't, they don't need to be white. You're, you're ticking that box and saying, well, no other Hispanic, Asian, white person, purple, green, orange, don't forget about Trump, um, can take that position. And, and that is in and of itself discrimination. You're, you're giving it to somebody that is less qualified to tick that box. That's exactly what it is. If they didn't have those quotas, then less black people would be in certain programs. If they were to get assessed, they say, okay, no, I have five Asians, I have 10 black people. Isn't that they discrimination though? Of course it's discrimination, but it has to be this way because that's the world we have created. She, she's at least admitting it. She's, she's at least admitting it. When somebody is willing to admit it, right? When somebody is willing to admit it, um, those are people that you can actually have an honest conversation about. You can have an honest conversation about why it's wrong. So at least she's admitting it. Respect points for her and also respect points for uh, Jen for pushing back on that, kind of calling that out. Great job on that. That's the world we have right. created. I would point to things like the Harvard scandal where really, really qualified Asian kids, so they're getting left out. You can have a doctor because somebody got into med school but their scores weren't that great. But I believe in quality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. I think that's Marxist and you can only enforce that with a gun. I He's finding some really good people in this video. That guy is absolutely spot on and amazing that on the spot, he brought up the Harvard scandal, which was discriminating against Asian students. So we're not even having a conversation about white people, right? We're not even having a conversation about that. That's not okay. In what world is that okay? I Basically only in woke world is that discrimination okay. They're really, really... <laughs> Uh, basically merging the line between racist and woke. And I know you guys hear that often, but it's incredibly, credi incredibly true. They are blurring that line. I think that there's a bit of a slippery slope that happens when we bring people into certain opportunities or certain institutions simply because of their skin color. And you could even argue that itself inherently could be a bit racist. It's, it's reasonable to have equal amount Perfect. of different races involved in the workplace. But is it achievable the way we're doing it right now? No, I don't think. No, it, b both those people totally get it. The, the, that lady's super well-spoken too. Um, she's, he, he, Jen found some great people for this video. 
Uh, this guy has a very unique perspective, and he's he's saying it the way it is. Is it achievable? Is it doable? Is it helpful the way that we're doing it right now, which is discriminating, right? Even if you're making the argument of, oh, well, people were discriminated in the past, so we need to discriminate now to make up for it. No, no, no. You, you need to give people equal opportunity now. You're no better if you're discriminating now. And is it dividing the country more? Are you hurting the country? We've seen from recent polls, I believe it was the Gallup poll, showing race relations in the United States. They've been, they've been tracking that for decades. And since 2013, when a lot of this identity politics really started ramping up around the, George, uh, around the uh, uh, Zimmerman trial and all of that, Black Lives Matter was also found in 2013. Ever since 2013, before then, race relations were on a slight increase, but they were, they were pretty high. They were, we were looking pretty good in the United States. Ever since 2013, 2014, race relations in the United States has been plummeting since they've been pushing all of this insane identity politics in the country. You think talking about racism helps the problem or makes the problem worse? I think talking about it with different sets of ideals hopefully pushes the conversation forward a little bit. Getting your worldview shattered and smashed to is sometimes good. White people should be talking sure. more about race. In my social settings with white friends, it isn't brought up enough. I think there's a certain level of awareness that needs to be raised. However, bringing it up in the context of us versus them, I think that itself contributes to racism. She keeps crushing it, spot on. If we keep talking about it, eventually, you know, it'll probably subside somewhat. I don't think it's going to go away, though. I think you have to look at things holistically, and you can't be just one-sided, left or right. I feel like there's always a middle ground. People recycle the same bullshit topics, but no one's talking about love. I guess people aren't talking about love enough, sure. Um, when it comes to the comments that they're making, does it help? Does it, does it actually help? Well, I think there's two sides of this, right? What doesn't help is lying about racism, the continuous lying about racism. If there's a black individual involved with a police shooting or something, the first thing that the media has been jumping to is focusing on the skin color. Why? It gets clicks. They get to push the racist narrative, all of that. So lying about racism does not help. It divides the country, destroys the country. However, having actual conversations about race relations or anything along those lines and being able to talk about it, of course, can help because the mainstream media constantly pushes, let's just use the example of the lie that police are systemically racist. Having more conversations about that generally exposes the lies. So it can help. If you're race baiting, it's absolutely not. Is what the media is doing right now helpful? Is what is what politicians are doing right now, is that helpful to bringing Americans together? I think most of us would argue absolutely not. One thing's for sure though, the country, what we're seeing right now is we're seeing the media and politicians talking about racism like it's a massive problem within the country and it's absolutely not. There is no data, no anything to support that narrative. It's simply about dividing people, dividing each other to gain power. That's simply it, All right? There's not enough supply to meet the demand of the Democrats and the media when it comes to wanting racist narratives to push. There's simply not enough supply in a country with 330 million people. We do pretty good. What do you think is a bigger problem, racial or income differences? I would say that income inequality would be worse because I think that if we were to be able to fix that somehow, then it could fix a lot of the other issues. Income inequality, I think that like we all deserve like a certain standard of living. Yes, racism sucks, but at the same time, it's not on the level of like people who can't eat. I think the discrepancy of income can actually affect certain components of race and how certain things are viewed. And so I kind of see them as feeding into each other. This is, it, this is a really good question actually, because Jen's trying to focus on something that's aside from talking about, you know, simply just race. What's a bigger deal, income inequality or race in the country? Y'all obviously have some radical activists that just say race and that's it because they're race obsessed, they're race baiters, that's, what, that's all they care about, such as this guy right here. However, uh, the way he framed the question, in my opinion, I actually disagree with it because the question should be, what's the bigger decider for, you know, how you do in the United States? and then ask race or you know socioeconomic status but even that question even that question is lacking one major major um point and that's culture and personal decision making a lot of people just want to use socioeconomic status as an excuse for any bad decision making or anything like that bad uh, you know culture that's not 
uh, uplifting a nuclear family structure, education, making good decisions when it comes to what career paths you're taking, all of that. So when it comes down to it, the most important factor here is personal decision making and culture. And those two tend to align with each other. Racial, absolutely. Like racial inequality follows income inequality. I think it's still racial because at the end of the day that plays into the income and everything else that goes on, like the opportunities that we have. I think it all plays into it. So There's relative poverty and there's abject poverty. In the West, I don't think we have abject poverty. But people that are down and don't want to get up and work, go bust your ass, man. Very few people that are busting their ass, I would say most of them are probably getting someplace. It may be slow, but you're going to get someplace. Totally spot on. Totally spot on. Going back to what the um, Heritage, Fa Heritage Foundation said, when it comes to not being permanently poor in America, you have to do three things. And those three things are graduate high school, get a job and keep it, don't have a child before marriage. Those are the three things to not be permanently poor in the United States. It's, it's, it's pretty easy to make your way to the middle class with just basic good decision making. And what does that go back to? That goes back to your upbringing. That goes back to values and culture and personal decision making. By far the most important indicator for how you do in life in our country. By far. More important than race and even more important than socioeconomic status. You can grow up rich and still be a complete disaster. You know, you might get your inheritance. Great. You're probably going to blow it all. And that's where they get the term from rags to riches to rags. How about like, let's say for an example, like LeBron James' son. Do you think he probably was born in a better position than let's say like a poor white kid in the trailer park? I feel like that's different. I, you can't compare the two yeah. because at the end of the day, he is a black man. He still is viewed as a black man. In society. Oh my gosh. I just got to say, um, that mentality, going back to, let's say, culture and, and, and having that mentality that this woman has right there, there is nothing more destructive to a young man, young woman, specifically, probably specifically young man, but a, but a child, than instilling that in their mind. Telling a child that no matter what you do, you're still a black person. You're still a person of color. I, I, I can't even believe that that's even being said right there. Oh, it's totally different because that person in a trailer park, you know, at least they don't have to deal with uh, their skin color being somewhat darker. The self-hatred's real here. And it's an incredibly damaging ideology. If I grew up and my parents were telling me that, hey, you know what, you can do your best, but you are still white. So that's, that's a problem. How, how can you, you're setting people up for failure with that by telling them lies. Negative mentality, not good, incredibly toxic. Black community needs new leaders that totally shut that argument down. Do you think like in the news, like we hear more instances, uh, I feel like a lot of the rhetoric in the media today is around racial wars. It's a way of grasping at straws and uh, dealing simply with very complex issues. But the big issue is poverty, poverty and overpopulation. People who are in charge of portraying things in the media are often very wealthy themselves, right? They don't want to shine a light on any kind of quality. Racism yeah. seems a lot more visual. It's visual. Yeah. yeah. You get uh, that outrage response right. with racism. It's easy to be like, F that person. I, I see where they're going with the conversation. Um, I, I see where they're going. I, I really have a hard time believing that the mainstream media is not covering, you know, income inequality. If anything, they're over covering it and selling it like we need, quote unquote, equity and equality of outcome. That's really what they're pushing right now. And I think that's actually, without digging too deep into this video, when people are making that argument and hyper-focusing on income inequality, oftentimes, not every time, obviously, but oftentimes they are trying to push kind of more of a uh, equality of outcome narrative and more Marxist view on what we should be doing in this country. So I just want to make sure that's a quick disclaimer. If I was there in this situation, I would have probably dug into that just a little bit more. Probably would have been off topic, but I, I, I am very, very curious about that. So closing statement from Jen. And by the way, you guys, if you haven't already, make sure to go subscribe over uh, at Jen's YouTube channel. He does a fantastic job kind of making these investigative journalist approaches to these street videos. And we haven't even gone through all his creative edits and everything like that. You gotta go check it out. So I'll put a link down in the description below. Here is his closing argument. We'll check out some of it and uh, we'll wrap it up. Ironically, it's those who claim to be the most open-minded that's 
actually the most closed-minded. And it's exactly why the line between woke people and racists are becoming the same thing. Do you think that's the best way to achieve equality is through hate? No. No, absolutely not. But I think you can't have those two words in the same sentence, equality and hate, you know? <laughs> because if equality is achievable, it's never through hate. But he does such a great job with these. Found some amazing people to be interviewing. Great job showing both sides of the conversation. He found ama like great picks for both sides of the conversation. And um, it, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? A lot of people are waking up. A lot of people, this is making more of a mainstream realization when it comes to just people in general, seeing that woke is really blurring the line with what racist is because they're in favor of separate graduations for people of a certain skin color. They're in favor of discriminating for job positions based on race. Even if you're not a conservative, you can see this and say, Okay, maybe I'm not a conservative, but but I'm not I'm not racist. <laughs> so I'm not that. And really these are a major selling point when it comes to just getting people on board with pulling away from leftism in modern day America just because this is at the base of their points. This is at the base of their movement, which is discrimination based on race. Anyways, you guys, let me know what you thought about Jen's video down in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about my commentary down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and hit that bell notification button so you're notified next time I post and I will catch you guys in the next video.